Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence and Finance. Now in this video we want to continue our practical example uh, based on the German credit data um, which is available from the Machine Learning Repository at UCI. Now we've already seen some summary statistics, we've done some data pre-processing in the sense that we've renamed the variables, uh, the columns in our data array. Uh, we have transformed the data frame in R to what we call a tibble from the tibble tidyverse, which is just a more convenient form of a data structure. It's a tibble, that's what it's called. And after having looked at the summary statistics, we now want to um, continue and using what is called uh, the weight of evidence uh, ratio, the WOE. Um, the weight of evidence ratio is a first way of having uh, a look at the explanatory power of some features because in the end, um, in data science, we want to predict something. We want to forecast maybe something. And as you might have guessed, if the data sample is called German credit data, it's probably that we are trying to forecast and predict uh, default rates in a loan portfolio. And for this, we are going to use the weight of evidence to get an understanding of the predictive power of some of our covariates of some of our features. Now, the weight of evidence encodes the relation between a categorical predictor variable with a binary target variable. So we have the binary target variable, which in our case is good rating, bad rating, and we have our numerous predictor variables, which need to be categorical. And this weight of evidence ratio originated in the finance industry. Actually, in this very same setting, it was used to separate good from bad risks. It has also been in use uh, in other areas for quite some time now, but it's still best known, I guess, in finance and industry and uh, insurance industry. So we'll use weight of evidence ratios. And in our case, it's defined as the logarithm of the number of non-events, which in this case is a good rating. There is no default. Uh, divided by the number of bad events or just the events we are looking at. So that's a bad rating. Now ratios of non-events, two events close to one indicate that the corresponding category, um, the covariate, the um, category of the covariate has no predictive power on the target value. Now this corresponds to a value near zero after having applied the logarithm. And one should be careful in deriving conclusions from the ratio as giving a loan, for example, to a defaulting customer is worse actually than not giving a loan to a non-defaulting potential customer. So this is still uh, a purely data-driven um, approach to get a first glimpse really of the predictive power of some of our covariates, um, apart from being completely void of any economic theory. But again, it gives us a first impression it gives us a first hint of what the data looks like. Now the weight of evidence is calculated in different groups, in different subsamples that are formed based on the covariate of interest. So for example, if we had um, gender as our covariate, this would be very simple because gender uh, will probably come in two or three, maybe four, I guess, uh, levels. Um, and if we only were to use male, female, then we only would have two groups, two subsamples. Both subsamples would be um, probably of equal size. Uh, there would be enough observations in each of these two groups and we could easily estimate and calculate the weight of evidence. So for the categorical variables, these might be the categories or a pooling of multiple smaller subcategories. For example, if uh, we think of our data, we had uh, the checking um, account status, we had, um, we might, for example, have income. So every income, because income will most likely be a float number um, variable um, or an integer one. Um, everyone has a slightly different income. For example, you might have an income of 40,000 euros per year. The next person might have 40,005 euros per year. So all these um, income observations would be slightly different. So you need to pool them to arrive based on those multiple smaller subcategories and 
observations, you might arrive at uh, larger categories and larger pools um, so that there are enough observations in all of these uh, pools. So for continuous variables, most definitely one has to create bins based on thresholds. For example, you could say, okay, income from zero to 40,000 euros, 40 to 80,000 euros, and everyone who has an income higher than 80,000 euros per year. Each category bin should it contain at least 5% of all observations to avoid the results being driven by noise or outliers. So there need to be enough observations in each and every bin. Let's do this for the checking account status. So we'll use the first attribute, which is a qualitative one. Remember that we have four levels below zero Deutschmark, uh, between zero and 200 Deutschmarks, more than 200, and we have no checking account. So four different levels. And we calculate the weight of evidence weight of evidence and some further simple ratios to compare them to the weight of evidence. We are using the pipe operator again. Let me highlight this here um, from um, the LPLYR package. Uh, you need to select the checking account status. That's the new um, variable name we've given to. Um, actually, this was uh, V1. And what we are also calculating is the percentage of total observations which is just simply the length of rating divided by the number of rows. A good rating is the mean when rating is good, and the weight of evidence as defined on the previous slide is the log of the sum of good ratings divided by the sum of bad ratings. So let's see what comes out of this. If we print those uh, uh, results, you can see for these four levels, A11, A212, and so on, we have a percentage of total observations of 27, 27, 6, and 39 percent. The good rating, 50 percent, 61, and so on. And the weight of evidence is more uh, tilted towards the um, the extremes to one, uh, actually to zero and uh, two. So, uh, if we plot this and compare the two statistics, percentage of good ratings in these four bins, and the weight of evidence for those four levels. Uh, we can see that actually, uh, based on the percentage of good ratings, one could think, okay, there seems to be a difference between those four uh, levels. It's increasing, so uh, A14 is actually, um, seems to be a level that has more predictive power uh, to explain default rates. But um, the differences between those four levels are not that extreme. But if you look at the weight of evidence, you will see that actually the first level has almost no predictive power. Whereas the fourth level, which if you might remember this, is no checking account. You don't have any checking account at all. This seems to be highly predictive of a bad credit line. And this is also um, what we are looking for. Yeah, so it seems that when looking at the weight of evidence, uh, the third and fourth level, uh, these um, outcomes of this variable, these levels, they seem to predict a bad credit rating quite well. Yeah? So the weight of evidence shows this more clearly than the percentage of good ratings. Now let's turn to the loan duration. Uh, the first plot on the left shows you a box plot. Um, across all thousand observations and if you um, divide this up into good and bad credit ratings remember that it is defined as a variable that takes on one and two as uh, values you can see that okay it seems as if and this is only speculative if we are honest it seems as if uh, the loan duration if it's lower, seems to predict a low uh, value for rating. And if it's higher, it seems to predict a higher value of rating. So uh, low loan duration seems to imply a good rating and uh, the other way around. But this is only speculative because actually uh, the plot on the right isn't really helping here. So again, let's calculate the weight of evidence separately for each unique value of loan duration. Um, we cannot really do this because if we take, this is an integer variable, but still, as you can see from the plots here, um, the uh, thousand observations are pretty uh, quite dispersed across the universe of 
all those loan durations, so we need to create bins. So first of all, we calculate for each value of loan uh, duration, uh, again, the um, good rating, and uh, we take the mean of the good rating in each of these groups, we group by duration, and then actually uh, we um, form larger groups on a yearly basis. Uh, and do the same and calculate uh, the mean of the good rating. So this is on the left hand side, this is before grouping. As you can see, there are some uh, loan durations for which we don't even have an observation. Um, and this, well, one would say, yes, there seems to be a trend that looks like this. And this becomes much clearer uh, as soon as we group um, our observations into yearly bins of uh, loan duration and you can see yes the percentage of good rating seems to decrease um, the longer the loan duration is okay now finally uh, we also have a look at the credit history variable and for brevity we do not consider further variables remember that we actually had 20 uh, covariates in our data sample. We, we could have used additional variables, but we are only showing this here for um, now the credit history, checking account status and loan duration. So let's use credit history. It has uh, five values. No credits taken, all credits paid back yearly, all credits as this bank paid back yearly. Well, uh, the second line, A31, will probably be the best predictor and the best level if we are interested in a good rating because it means yes you've taken up loans and you've all paid all those loans back in time existing credits and loans paid back yearly till now delay in paying off and best critical account so that's the worst state actually of this map again let's calculate the percentage of total observations the mean of the good ratings and the weight of evidence and this is what comes out uh, of this analysis, you can see here, uh, it starts with 4%, 4%, 50%, 8%, 29%. And for the weight of evidence, actually, it's even more extreme as we've seen before. So this is the percentage of good ratings. This looks like this, and it's much more extreme and not surprisingly the last status, which is that it's a critical account. This is highly predictive and it's a high explanatory power for explaining a bad credit rate. So this is the weight of evidence ratio that can be used to study the explanatory power of some of our covariates in order to see which variable should be included in later models. So this is data pre-processing and in the next video we'll talk about data generation.